Hi. This is the second video about whether astrophotography color is real. And I'm going to blow your mind. Ready? Look at this. Dark gray, light gray. Cover this part up and... Same gray. I'll eventually explain all of this and how it relates to astrophotography. As a bonus, at the end of the video, I'll respond to some of your comments from the previous color video. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. We've got a problem, it seems. Parts of our vision, especially related to color, are apparently fake. Is there any escape from this? How do we make the world right again? And more importantly, what does any of this have to do with astrophotography? So about that illusion. Wait a minute, we'll get back to the illusion. We've got another problem to deal with. In this video, I went into detail about color vision. If you haven't watched it, watch it first and come back. We learned that human color vision consists of two color channels, a yellow-blue channel and a red-green channel. But there is another channel, the luminance channel. Brightness, you see, no pun intended, affects color too. But how do we generally perceive brightness? Wait a minute, there's another pressing issue, and it will help us understand brightness. All over the USA, LED street lights are breaking. Well, before all you astrophotographers shout for joy, they're still bright and your camera will still pick it up. They're not going out. They're changing colors. They're still emitting a lot of light, so why are they broken? Well, because your vision is kind of fake. Let's go back to the color channels. Remember how we talked about seesaws? Let's review the blue-green channel. When R and G cones are active and B cones are not active, your brain sees yellow. And the reverse is also true. The brightness channel is almost exactly the same, except you remove the B part of the seesaw. So basically, when your R and G cones are active, you see bright colors. When they're inactive, you see darker colors. This is probably due to the fact that in your fovea, where your vision is sharpest, you have R and G cones, but no B cones. Well, very few B-cones. B-cones are more likely to be in the periphery with your rods. In the periphery, you have less resolution and everything is a bit blurrier. It should now make sense why LED street lamps are breaking even when they still emit light. They aren't bright to humans because they don't activate R and G-cones. Not only that, the light they produce lands on the blurry part of your retina. So if you are driving in purple light at night, you can't see as well and you can't react as fast to things. Pretty crazy, right? Well, I guess that explains how we perceive brightness. All right, so what about the illusion? To understand that, wait a minute, we have another problem. A few years back, Technology Connections did a video about how brown is just red. And you know what? He's kind of right. You should check it out. It's a great video, but it's not just your brain mixing the input from the two color channels and the brightness channels. Whether you see brown depends on context. Your brain looks at the surrounding areas of a scene to interpret things. Don't believe me? Just look at this illusion. We'll call it a pseudo rubrics cube. Look at the center squares. One is brown and the other is yellow. Let me cover up most of the image, except for these two squares. Now they both look brown. Amazing. So brown isn't just red. It's also yellow, sometimes orange but it's the context that matters. Okay, so context matters, so that probably has something to do with the first illusion, right? And color and astrophotography? Wait, wait, wait. Sometimes context doesn't matter. Remember the great banana yet nebula I imaged last time? Well, you won't believe it, but I got a picture of it up close. In fact, I even brought it home with me. You see, I live on a huge spaceship. It's a giant sphere, and on this spaceship are smaller spaceships. It's really hard to get around the large spaceship where I live without a smaller spaceship. Anyway, I went to one of the local quartermaster depots and they actually sell the Great Banana Nebula. So I got it. I brought it home and I imaged it as it reflected light from the spaceship's fusion reactor. It looked yellow. I then took it to my living quarters and imaged it there with the same settings as before. So the same camera settings. To me, it still looked yellow, but the two pictures came out different. Look at these colors. Is it the camera settings? Well, not really. It's really our brains. This phenomenon is called color constancy. 
For some objects, the color looks the same to us even under different lighting conditions. The fusion reactor gave off mostly yellow light. My living quarters light was kind of blue compared to that. So the light reflecting off the banana nebula is different, yet I see the same color in person. Context, it matters, except when it doesn't. There's a life lesson in there somewhere, I'm sure of it. Okay, but we humans all kind of see the same colors if we have, quote, normal color vision, right? I mean, if context doesn't matter sometimes, and it does matter other times, but we fall into the same traps like always seeing a banana is yellow, then there must be some sort of pattern going on, right? And that might have something to do with the first optical illusion, right? And color in astrophotography? Hold on, we're not there yet. Back in 2015, there was this picture. Take a look at this image of a dress. Some people saw a yellow and white dress, others saw a blue and black one. So others saw both sets of colors, depending on how they were thinking about it. That's strange. So not everyone sees the same thing. This is almost the reverse of color constancy in the banana. The reason people see different colors in this case is not 100% clear but it most likely has to do with what they assume the lighting of the dress is. Do you assume the dress is in daylight or in the store? What color is the light shining on it? People have different assumptions and those assumptions affect your vision. In fact, your native language affects your color perception. A lot of my viewers are English speakers. These two colors are both shades of blue, but in some languages like Greek, these are different colors. Light blue has its own specific color term. So I'm going to show you some dots. Just look at them. Blue, 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 light blue, blue, light blue, 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 blue. You may not know it, but your brain is processing what it sees. And we can put electrodes on your scalp and measure those brain waves in microvolts after you see an image. Averaging over several trials, a pattern emerges. This pattern in neuroscience is called an event-related potential. Interestingly, when you see something that is rare, like a light blue dot randomly appearing after several dark blue dots, the event-related potential gets more negative. This is kind of automatic, and you really don't have to pay attention much for the brain waves to act this way. This finding is robust and has been demonstrated in several cognitive experiments. A few researchers got together and were like, can we provide scientific evidence that Greek speakers see the two shades of blue as two distinct colors? So they showed Greek speakers and English speakers these dots. Half the time they saw blue dots, half the, half the time they saw green dots. Green was the control because both English and Greek speakers have one main color term for green. The Greek speakers' brain waves were more negative when they saw the deviant blue colors compared to the deviant green colors. The event-related potential, or ERP measurement in this case, is only 100 to 200 milliseconds after they saw a stimulus. For English speakers, blue deviant colors were about as negative as green deviant colors. This suggests that having two color terms for blue makes them different color categories. Imagine that. It's kind of like the difference between light and dark blue for Greek speakers is the same as the difference between green and blue for English speakers, or maybe pink and red, although it's hard to tell definitively. But there's a lot of research in the past 20 years that shows perception of color categories is based on both biology and language. All right, I think we're almost there. So what about this picture is so confusing? Well, you know enough about vision to answer it yourself, I think. But there's the simple formula. What we see is a combination of what you expect to see and information coming from your rods and cones. In other words, your brain estimates what is probable based on past experience and integrates that with your visual input. Now everything starts to make sense. You are used to light coming from above. You see this edge and your brain is like, hey, there is a shadow here. And then it makes an estimation of how much light gets blocked from the edge and integrates it with the actual brightness coming from that area. Because the actual brightness from the top and bottom are the same, but your brain knows that the bottom is in a shadow, it estimates that the true shade of the bottom area is brighter than that of the top area. It's the same explanation for the pseudo rubrics cube. It's also the same explanation for the Great Banana Nebula. 
your brain expects yellow and it sees the banana as yellow even if the color of the light hitting it is different. It's the same explanation for the dress. People have different expectations about what the lighting is and it affects their perception. So, is color in astrophotography fake? You bet it is. We established that in the last video. But is it even more fake in astrophotos than in regular photos? Well, you can make the case that it is. Think about it. Have you ever been inside the Orion Nebula? No? Where is the light coming from? From the top down, the bottom up, from your left, from your right? We really don't have any experience with a lot of these objects. They're too big, they're too far away, and the light they emit or reflect lacks the context that we are used to. Okay, now for some comments from the last video. Dale says that imaging colors always seems to look a bit different on each target even if I reprocess some old data as it never looks the same. Yep, 100% agree, happens with me too. We just don't have the experience to know what the color should look like. If we are going to take a picture of a tree with RGB filters and a monochrome camera, I'm pretty sure that when we combine the, the filters, we'd get the colors more consistent. Maybe not 100% consistent each time we would do it, but more consistent than in astrophotos. Cake Batter says, the simple answer is astrophotographers commonly take creative license with the color in astrophotography and post-processing. Yep, this is true. As I pointed out in the last video, color vision is definitely fake though which one could argue makes all the photography fake, and no amount of copium will fix that. Thanks for watching.